Good evening, Wednesday evening, and you with Mansfield's Money Sense. Every now and again, we look at alternative investments, and um, we decided to look at investing in art. Joining us uh, in the studio this evening, Albert Korf, the owner of House of Art, and joining us from our bureau in Cape Town is George Herman, who is a senior investment strategist at Citadel. Um, Albert, how did you get involved in this? Jeremy, it's uh, quite a long story. Around about 17, 18 years ago, I started to sell art just because I love art okay. and I'm an artist myself, but I'm also a, a good marketer. So I started to sell art. And since then, I'm in the art business. One stage had three galleries, currently two, one in Woodlands in Boulevard in Pretoria, one in Waterkloof. And um, when I saw really what art can do for you, I... Um, started to investigate the, the investment side of art a little a bit more thoroughly. And um, in the past six years, I must say uh, I'm astonished uh, what art did for my clients and, and for me. And uh, yes, I currently advise uh, quite a lot of people to invest in art and coming to me, helping them to make the right choices and buy the right art and also help them to to maintain it keep it intact and resell it for them okay we come back to a few of those points mm. because you've raised a lot of points there <laughs> um george um i'm going to pose the same question to you because we, when we were before we started the show when we got our link up to cape town um i was chatting to you and i thought okay this guy is not an artist um what is what is your involvement in, in investing in art. Jeremy, thank you. Citadel uh, is a private client wealth management business and many of our clients come to us and they ask us, we have a significant portfolio or a collection of art, what must we do with this? And we have to advise clients on their art holdings and hence uh, we, we needed to do some studies into the dynamics of the art world. We found that very difficult because there was no transparency in that universe. So we developed the Citadel Art Price Index along with Econex and uh, Auction Vault who provided us with the data. And we developed an index to track how South African art trades over time. Our index uh, was launched late last year and it works with data all the way back to 2001. And we've now constructed an index which we will publish quarterly and that gives some view of what is happening with art in South Africa. So our involvement is to understand the dynamics of the art industry as it relates to other asset classes and other alternative asset classes. Okay, so if you've got now a, a, a private client and you're managing their wealth, um, it's a question I ask of everybody who comes on the show. What, what sort of percentage do you attribute to an art investment portfolio as part of their whole investment? That thinking, Jeremy, is still developing. Typically, the question would start one level higher, and that is that how much of your investment portfolio would you ascribe to alternative asset classes? And those alternative asset classes are very difficult to quantify. These are typically known as passion investments, and people often buy investments because of the visceral attraction that they have to that asset. So whether it's a yacht, a race car, a wine collection, other collectibles, uh, there are so many alternative asset classes and it's very difficult to prescribe a percentage towards that. Once we've kind of normalized it and created it as an asset class, one would typically say that in private client portfolios, you would see as much as 25 to 30% of a portfolio in alternative asset classes. Cheapers, would have thought it was that high. But, uh, but uh, just to come back to what George was saying there about trying to get a fix on where it is, the, the structure of it and all the rest of it. How, how do you determine what you're paying for an investment in art? Uh, Jeremy, that, that's uh, for the, the guy on the street, it's a little bit difficult. And that's why I saw this gap in the market where, like um, my friend said, that there's not a real a lot of transparency in, in the art world. Mm. And um, because it's, it's, it's a thing that you, you normally do art with your heart, to try people to change, to invest in art, uh, 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 
uh, it's hard to change them because they don't know the art world. And that's where I came in and I said, I've got to teach people. And the past six, seven years, I, I'm really busy helping people to, to, to get more knowledge about art, showing that there is, is, is really investment value in art and, and try to get the right art to the people. And that's, that's what I'm doing currently. Okay, but to me, when I was thinking about this show earlier today, I thought to myself, surely it's fairly easy. You go with a, a, a Pirniev. You, I mean, you can't really go wrong there if you're wanting to invest in art, surely, because that is going to appreciate in time. Well, at the end of the day, that's the right thing. The, the f uh, five top or six top artists, you can't go wrong. Actually, you can't go wrong with any of these hundred that Citadel has on their books as such, because that's already artists that's, that's in demand, artists that's known in South Africa. There are that many around? Uh, well, yes. If you just look at this uh, uh, top hundred artists that Citadel's uh, identified, uh, identified there's, there's quite a lot. But what I am doing, I'm not only going to do, look at who is selling the most at the auctions. I'm also going to, to, to look at what artist grows, is the growth is the best. Okay. So that I start recommending. It can be maybe a number 50 or number 60 on, on the list. But because I've seen in practice that it sells good and there's a demand and, and but there's not a lot in, in circulation, I will rather take that one because I've got this personal relationship with my client. I'll ask them, uh, tell them, this is what I would suggest. You, you buy right now. I've got it in the market. I've got it at the right price and I can resell it for you. And this is what we, I think we can make in the next five or ten years. Um, George? The, the, this list that, that Citadel's put together here, yeah, that, that um, Albert's referring to, um, how did you guys go about doing, putting that together? Did you, did you go through people like Albert and say, who should be on the list? Uh, no, not at all, uh, Jeremy. It is not at all a qualitative list. That list was arrived at by going back to auction data that was accumulated from the year 2000 and take works of art that traded at auction and then the, the rank that by the artists who traded the most number of pieces on the auction. So that list shows the amount of work that was traded of that artist over this entire period. So it's kind of to reflect in financial market terms the liquidity that exists for that artist. So Albert's comment that the lower names on the list is kind of unknown by many people and that might create great value is a fantastic comment and that is so true because we do not make any qualitative statement. This is merely a reflection of the amount of pieces of that artist that traded over the last 10 years. What is the liquidity in the, uh, the art market? I mean, if you've got this painting, um, mm. as you say, it's a very, it's a very personal mm. thing mm. to mm. buy a piece of art. Um, you may look at it at the list and go, yeah, that person is up and coming, they're showing growth. Mm. But how easy is it to offload that? Uh, Jeremy, uh, that, that, that is uh, the, uh, a good question because I saw the difficulty to get rid of it except through an auction. And that's why I, 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 I am in the market currently to help and I think there's a few other uh, guys also in the market trying to help people to get rid of these uh, without the auction because we've got a huge database, client database. Now the main thing if you look at, at the liquidity is uh, the top 100 is the things that's in demand. So if you take it to a auction, mm. it, is, it will sell there. Uh, sooner or later, maybe uh, not the first auction, maybe the second auction, but you will get your money. I, I state the other day to a guy that if you are in the art to, to, to make money, you've got to stay at least five years. Five years or a little bit longer. If you need money urgently, it's like any other commodity. 
you are going to maybe lose because you're in desperate need for the money. You may be going to take a low, lower price and uh, get rid of it and lose some money. But you can't say then the art did not do that well for you. Because if you follow the right channels and people like me helping you to get rid of it and sell it um, and you give me enough time, a three to uh, a 12 month period, we can get the prices, the right prices for you. Um, George, you, would you go with Albert on that, that sort of time frame of if you're getting involved in this sort of market, once again, you are in for the long term? Those are absolutely fantastic comments, uh, Jeremy, and I agree wholeheartedly. Remember that people who invest in art have a dual objective. Their objective is their passion for this product. <clears throat> if you come into this market purely for monetary terms and you want to make an investment and hit and run, you are going to get burnt in this market. That is not what this market is about. If you are passionate and you do invest in art, and like you mentioned the name earlier on and you felt that you can't go wrong on that, that's like me buying Anglo shares, I can't go wrong on that if I'm prepared to stay long enough. So yes, the time period, the investment horizon for somebody who sees the second objective, namely investment in this asset class, will have to have a long time horizon and I would think even longer than five years. Okay, but I suppose one advantage of this asset is um, if you invest in gold, for example, you can't go and look at your gold because it's an investment, at least in art. If you, if you do love art and you're wanting to diversify your investment portfolio and get involved in art, in art as an investment, you can at least hang the, the, the painting or put the sculptor that you, you love into your house and have it there. And enjoy it. And enjoy it. Absolutely. And when the time is right and the offer is right, Absolutely. you can then make the sale. That's right. That's absolutely Jeremy, right, Jeremy. That's absolutely so true. When we when we launched this index, some of the some of the people in the art community told me, "Yeah, you capitalists would never understand the passion we have for these investments." And I said, "Whoa, we're not as capitalists coming into your industry. We are merely holding up a mirror and reflecting what is happening in this industry. And uh, that mirror shows how the investors or the buyers or the holders absolutely love the investments and that." That utilitarian use that they get from actually looking at it is fantastically valuable and no capitalist or index or anything in the world can ever overstate that value. Talking about investing in art, we'll be back uh, with uh, more comments on it in just a moment. Don't go away. Welcome back. Still in the studio with me, uh, Albert Korf, owner of House of Art, and joining us from our bureau in Cape Town, George Hadman, who is a senior investment strategist at, uh, uh, with Citadel. We're talking about investing in art this evening. Um, now, during, during the break, you were just telling me how, how, how difficult it is to change people's mindsets about, about art and art is an investment. investment. Absolutely. Yeah. Jeremy, that, that's what. Uh, I found when I'm talking every day with people coming into my gallery, trying to change their minds, and it's so difficult when they come there and I tell them, you, can I tell you something more? What do you know about art investment? What art do you have in your house? Um, uh, do you know anything about investment art? You know, there's maybe a one or two percent of people currently that really uh, are positive on the, on the investing, investing in art. Mm. And how difficult it is because since they were small, they were taught you buy a, p a picture because you love it or you do have place. Yeah. Now right. that's good and that's great and that's how I teach all people when you want to do something in your house against the walls, buy what you love, buy what if you have place from a reputable company that already did the sifting in the market. You know, it, 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 it's easy, you know. If I tell you two to three people per day that contact us to exhibit the art, you, you, you can't sell everybody's art. And there's yeah. brilliant art. There's, there's something in the, in, 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 in the art world. It's not everybody that makes it. I, uh, I always tell this 
uh, I compare it with a marathon, a comrades marathon. Um, it's not everybody that uh, uh, get a medal. It's only the top ten that gets the gold. Mm. And, and most of the time they only remember Bruce Fordyce. And, and, and that's almost the same with, with the art world, you know. And when I tell them, I would like you to go and look at these guys, very good, like this top 100, a, a good investment. Where do you invest your money? I would like you to, to, to try this alternative. And um, most of them tell me, uh, Albert, but I don't like it. <laughs> I, I, it's ugly. I won't even take it. And then I uh, take one unknown artist to them. That's quite, uh, did I take, took a, a Pemba. And I said, can I give you three seconds to say yes to this offer now? And I said, okay, 20,000, one, two, three. And I was counting very fast because I don't want them to say yes because it's much more worth. And then they said, no, not, I won't even take it for free. And then I'd show them, you've just lost the biggest bargain of your life because you said no. And that's why I'm there. I'm helping these people to educate them. And I would love to see more people like me helping to educate because it's a very, uh, I would say, um, um, a secret sort of thing because there's not, yeah. there's, there, 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 there's no uh, 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 school that you can go through to yeah, and was, learn about. I was that. going to raise that because it is a very, it's perceived by people like me as a very cliquey bunch of people who sort of hang around drinking big glasses of red wine. And, and they don't looking, talk out. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, uh, George, back to, back to your side of it now, because Albert has obviously got the, the passion side of it for the art itself, um, and is now looking at how to translate that passion into an investment, which is going to give you a return. But you guys seem um, to be very sort of clinical, in the manner in which you've approached this as an investment class. Um, did you, was, was, there, was there any sort of pushback from the, those, the arty people who walk around with the, the big glasses of red wine? <laughs> Jeremy, we got kicked in the teeth properly by that little <laughs> clique of insiders, I can assure you. But talk about passion. We are passionate about investments. So I can't talk sense to you about any investment unless I've done my homework and I've done some form of analysis. So unfortunately, that exercise needed that we do a thorough analysis of this asset class. And that was a very theoretical um, uh, uh, process. So yes, that felt kind of very clinical. But after that, when we took the index to the art community, <laughs> we initially had a very, very cold reception. I get on stage and I tell them, listen, I know nothing about art, but I'm going to tell you about the possibilities of investing in art. And uh, you can imagine that it wasn't a warm welcome to start with until they realized the same point that Albert made earlier, that we merely trying to add transparency to this industry and that higher level of transparency will probably lead to more investors coming into this universe and actually bringing more money and, and, and interest into this whole world. So we've had to, uh, in the beginning, explain quite a bit, but then we got some feedback from the art community and say, hey, but if you do this, maybe you should do it in this way. Maybe you should include that. Maybe you should try that. And we've made several adaptations to the calculation methodology of our index uh, since the original launch last year to reflect the feedback that we've gotten from the market and We were very pleased with that and the index is probably now even more reflective of current trends in the art market in South Africa So very pleasing that uh, the attitude has changed somewhat in that industry and I feel a lot more welcome there these days <laughs> um, Just briefly what what is yeah, have you seen growth in? people wanting to invest in art We've had so much uh, feedback on our, since we've launched our index. I mean, I literally get phone calls and emails where people say, I want to invest in this. And then we have to explain our product is not an investable product. We're not trying to pull assets into this product to invest in the art market, not at all. Our product is merely a reflection of what is happening in the art market in South Africa. And if you are interested to invest in art, go to the specialist. 
go to the galleries and they will guide you into this fantastic world. But uh, yes, we've had fantastic response to this and a lot of interest indeed. Albert, your um, feeling on this, this, I, this index? I, I just want to say, Jeremy, I thank guys like George and Citadel because they, they really helped us because we were... Uh, sort of pushing against the wall the whole time because it's not a common market to 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 invest mm. in mm. and by bringing out this and common and and, and and more openly talking about the investment values and the newspapers writing about this auction and this painting of Irma Stern that went for 34 million or whatever you know uh, created a awareness that people started to think hey there's something in it so currently we do have, uh, I must say, during this uh, uh, recession time, if it wasn't more for the investment part of my business, I would have had problems because now I got uh, a, a lot of people that maybe thought, well, this market doesn't uh, produce or help me this much, you know, I've got to change. And, and people came to the art gallery and, and asked my advice and as a matter of fact started to invest in the art and um, um, I must say the, the clients that I do have currently um, are very satisfied. What? I'm, I know this is probably going to be an impossible question to answer but if I'm going to go into this particular type of investment what sort of returns am I looking at here? Jeremy, because I know the art, the market, and I know the prices that, that you've got to pay and you can get in the market. And because of people coming to me that's got an art piece for around about 20, 30, 40 years, uh, that bought it for a thousand rand, currently it's, it's maybe 200, 300,000 worth. Um, if I can get that piece at under the market price, I can give it through to you at under market price and you can make from day one you can make money so uh, I don't give it to you at the market price as such I give it to you under the market price the other day I had a friend of mine asking me Albert to help me with with making some money so I said to him okay don't try to get your money out as quick as possible yeah four months later he told me um, uh, the SARS needs some money oh and he said you must please help me I've got a lot of with you and I can't get my money from the another source and I said well I'm gonna try luckily I could change one of the paintings within one month and you know I'm, I'm scared to tell you these things because it, it, it won't work in every case like that but I yeah. got a 30% for him from that one painting because I bought it at a good price and I could resell it at a good price to another person that got a good price and he made around about 30%. So he was so, so, so but, uh, excited about yeah, it. Yeah, but as you say, you can't, you can't put a single figure to it and I thought that was going to be the you, answer. You, you can't. You can't, so you, it, can't. You, you can't rate it like the whole share index or something you like can't. that. Yeah. You can't. It is, it is very speculative. I would like to add to that. Yes, yes, uh, certainly. If we, if we look at the overall asset class, Jeremy, I can't look at the individual pieces like Arnold does, but in terms of the overall asset class, you can understand because there's less liquidity than other listed investments we, and there's a lot more dispersion in this industry because, um, you know, art is homogeneous, so every single piece is different, so there's a huge ar 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 array of quality difference. There's a bit more risk overall in this market. So if you looked at, at the overall asset class, we would expect to have a risk premium even above that of equities. So in theory, in, uh, academically, we typically expect equities over long periods of time to deliver you with something like 6% over inflation. Because this is higher risk, you would typically expect something in the region of about 8% over inflation over long periods of time. If people are interested in going into this, what do, you, what do you suggest? That they go to people like you? Absolutely. Otherwise, they're going to burn the fingers. They don't know the market. I've got around about six, 17, 18 years of, of, of uh, background in it. I've investigated. I'm, I'm there where the, the rubber hits the time. There. Mm. So I will give them good advice um, of, of what to buy, what to not to buy. And, and because I know the art, I will tell you, him, this specific art of a specific artist, 
you can pay 20,000 more because it's going to resell easier because of the theme or whatever. So that's the type of mm. knowledge I can, I can give to my clients. If they come to me, I will help them to make the right choices. Um, and I would suggest guys that's quite long in the market, go to them, ask their opinion, and, and really don't just jump in uh, where yeah. angels fear to tread. Thank you. Albert, thank you very much for your Pleasure. time this evening. Um, uh, George, thank you very much for joining us from Cape Town. Um, thank you. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll catch you again next week. Good night.